Wilson Morales from Black Women TV talking to Kylie Jefferson regarding Tiny Pretty Things, which is the new series on Netflix. Uh, you're no stranger to what the premise of the story is about. How did this come about for you? Ooh, um, so I wasn't even dancing at the time. I got to that point where I realized, hey, you have to grow up. You're an adult. You pay your own bills. So maybe it's time to re kind of navigate the journey. Um, and I take I had taken on an assistant job for an executive at CAA. And, you know, I was just like, as long as I can be a part of the creative process, I was okay with that. However, I thought. <laughs> um, it, it got to a point where my spirit just kind of like really couldn't, couldn't allow me to fit myself in that box anymore. And I think my boss at the time, he could tell. And the last thing that he said to me was, I want you to follow your immediate dream. I had no idea what that meant because it felt like everything that I wanted to do or my strengths were all so all over the place. And I did not know how they would come together. However, Tiny Pretty Things was the first um, job of any sort to come my way. And at first, at first I saw it through like a casting website email. Then my agent has sent it to me and a few friends, my friend Jeffrey Maya Hightower, who's an actress as well, she was like, girl, this is you. What are you doing? You need to do this audition. And I was like, you're right. And I looked at myself in the mirror one day and I said, girl, you're skinny right now. So you might as well go for it. And even then, the description on the email said that she had to be you know, exceptional at ballet and she would be on every episode. So I still did not know that Nevea was the main character. I just needed a job. <laughs> and even then when I finally did, um, you know, get confirmation that I received the part, I was just happy I had a job. And I was ready to show up for that. And I remember like the first day of rehearsal, <laughs> I took a moment. So I was like, whew, breathing a little heavy. And I was like, I have not sat down. And that's when I realized who Nevea was to the storyline and that it was time to really show up and show out for her the best way possible. Mm -hmm. Now, this is based on a book. Had you read the book and was the part of Nevea always African-American? Um, I've, I've skimmed through the book with my auntie Tracy. She's like, she is a fanatic when it comes to books. So I do answer to Gigi as well. But in, I think so. I like Gigi's character. I think she's She's a little bit of everything. And I, but that's the thing about Nevaeh. She, yeah, she is a black girl, but she's also a universal person. So that's what I really took from Gigi um, when I was reading the book. And I love that. Uh -huh. Now, as you mentioned, this is your first project. So had you, you already been taking acting lessons, you know, or I, like, or did, I, you know, obviously you can dance, you know, or did you have to come back and re, we rehearse what you learned, you know, when you went for auditions. A little bit of both. Um, I had taken some acting classes in the past, probably about like six months before taking my assistant job. And I had done like a little background on Grey's Anatomy here and there. So that was really <laughs> like that was my acting experience. But Ms. Allen always says dancers make the best actors. So that was just something that I had to like try to continue to repeat to myself so that I could have the confidence to, to show up, but also the confidence to be able to take the criticism without my spirit, you know, doing mm -hmm. no one. Now the show has been compared to other shows of the past, you know, Gossip Girl here, other shows there, you know, especially when you're playing to a young crowd. Uh, how would you describe Nevaeh if she's a little bit different from the book and for those who haven't read the book, like how, how would you best describe her? When it comes to the series, she holds everybody around her down in such an interesting way. She, she's trying to like, a, she's trying to find and establish like a certain sense of security in the world because she is, she is the black girl who was never protected um, who never really saw like a healthy relationship growing up, who clings to ballet because it's the only thing that provides security and safety for her and like kind of rules to how you should move through life. 
Um, and then, you know, you also, as a black girl, you see her nuances and the way she dresses and in her tone sometimes, but that's, that's me too. So that was probably my favorite part about her. It was that I knew, I was like, Nevaeh is me, like, and I am her all across the board. Even if my exact upbringing wasn't to a T, but at the same time, I knew exactly where her emotions were. And I knew, I understood what it was to like kind of struggle through those, those periods of time to like, to want safety, to, to use ballet as the, the foundation for the rest of, for everything else in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, Nevea, when she comes in, she has to learn how to fit in with this crowd, uh, with the cast, you know, with the, with the students in there. And just like you, as this is your first project, acting uh, with this crowd and this ensemble, you're both a fitting, you know? Uh, how was it like coming in where there are people who have acted before and they're, you know, for some people, this is their biggest visibility, you know? So how was it coming in, you're the lead, but at the same time, you're, you're learning how to fit in with, in this world? Very interesting. As Kylie, I went there with a certain respect for, you know, the craft, of acting and a respect um, to hold myself accountable to understand that I have not been learning this craft my whole entire life, if that makes sense. Like as a dancer, I've been at this since I could walk and I definitely, uh oh, okay, there we go. Um, as a dancer, I've, yeah, I've been doing this my whole life. So there was definitely a part of me that was like, that felt a little uncomfortable about the fact that I didn't have years of experience but at the same time the only way that I could flip that was to say you know what this is your opportunity to learn so you get on set you do what you were raised to do you do your job you are focused you are always learning no matter whether the camera is on you are not um especially as the only african-american woman in the room <laughs> Now, you, you know, you're a dancer, obviously the show's about dancing. Will people who have been in this position relate to the show? You know, like, oh, I, I've been through this, you know, I see- what Yes, because I've been through this, like in college, I've been through those things. Those girls were trying to come from my parts and they would tell, um, ooh, they would be in that dance division director's office throwing hissy fits, like, and- it was hurtful to an extent. Like, what do you think I have to prove to you? You thought your father was gonna pay for your, pay for you to be front and center? No, where I come from, you earn that. You earn it, you get the part that you worked for. And that doesn't mean that you always work for the part, right? So sometimes you're not always gonna be in the front because you didn't put that, you didn't put that respect forward. And then at the Boston Conservatory, it was like that for me sometimes. I know where my, I knew where my strengths were. I was always very like specific about where, what lanes I wanted to take. So once again, I wasn't always front and center, but baby, when I wanted to be, everybody in that room knew that was my spot. <laughs> now the beauty regarding you is that like, you've got the best happening this month because you're also in the documentary, Debbie Allen <laughs> and Cream Hot Chocolate. So for people who are like, where did I just see her? They're gonna know oh, this girl's a real dancer. <laughs> you know, she ain't just fake it till she made it. <laughs> you know, she's already in there. So, like, you know, from what I've read, obviously, you grew up, you know, working with Debbie Allen and now you're acting, you know. So, what was that experience like? Not only just growing up dancing, working with her, and now you're acting. It's like a fairy tale. It's like a fairy tale, but I didn't need the man to save me, I did it myself. Um, I mean, she's always pushed me in every direction that she could possibly see me going in, whether I was kind of stubborn about it or not. Um, acting and dancing, I kind of, I always showed up for a lot better than the singing. <laughs> but working with Miss Allen, I mean, she's definitely instilled a lot into me. She made me always work harder than everybody else in the room, so no one can ever say that she gave me anything. She made me work my, <laughs> made me work very hard for that. Um, but in return, she always showed up for me in ways that most people will never understand like that type of love. Mm -hmm. You know, for the show, you know, and throughout the episodes, you know, the showrunner is Michael, you know, 
And being that you're the lead and, you know, obviously there are other pathways involved, but as you are evolving as an actress, what did you learn from Michael in shooting the series that you can take on to your next project? The, my favorite part about Michael McLennan's writing is it's universal. Yes, he uses the lens of an African-American girl to introduce the story. And then we have, um, we have Nabil's character who's Muslim and we have, you know, Bet. we have all these different nationalities on the show, but the overall message and people love to point out like, you're the only black girl on there. Yes, because it's a, it's a universal show. Do you get what I'm saying? So he's making sure that the message, no matter what you are sitting on your couch watching the show, you can receive it. And I think that's, that's the best thing. It, and it's honestly like the direction that we need to be going into um, with everything that's going on in the world because it's not a race issue, it's a humanity issue. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with all the stuff, you know, Netflix has, you know, they show new shows every week, new movies. <laughs> yeah. That's just Netflix, you know, but we're getting stuff out of Hulu and Amazon. And since no one's really going to theaters, you know, this coming holiday, you know, and even now there's so much to watch, you know, what's a good reason for people to catch into tiny pretty things is you know that's different from watching any other show or movie because it's teaching you it's healing you it's entertaining you and it's loving you mm -hmm. it, it has some like really dark twisted corners but i feel like it's the dark twisted corners that people really don't talk about that they're experiencing within themselves. So I think when you're watching Tiny Pretty Things, in a similar way to like maybe Grey's Anatomy, like you're learning life lessons as you're, as you're watching the show to apply to yourself, to be nicer to yourself. And it's very interesting that he uses ballet to, to teach that because it can be the most one of the most destructive things. So before I let you go, you're getting all this visibility. People now to Googling your name. You're doing interviews here or there. Where do we meet <laughs> you at? You know, you're auditioning for places. Do you have anything lined up already? I am auditioning, um, but right now I'm just here with Tiny Pretty Things. Like this is like Christmas prolonged for me. And yeah, I'm just like looking forward to what to what is for me and doing my best to show up for it. Hey, well. The show just started, people will tune in. You know, the thing about this pandemic is that everything old is new again. So you don't have to catch it right away, but you'll catch it at, as it grows, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, people will say, oh, you know, did you see what happened in episode eight? Boom, let's go back to the beginning. Let's get to know who this character is. So keep doing your thing. Obviously, you've got two things that are airing on Netflix, which is right now hot right now, all these shows. So we're here to support. Stay safe. And we'll talk down the road whenever your next project comes up. Likewise, until next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.